Hello everybody, Jacqueline here and welcome back to my channel with Purpose of Grace. I'm excited to share with you this bit of my testimony uh, in lieu of the surviving sexual abuse story. I wanted to continue that by answering some of the questions I had received. The first one, and this is why I'm making the video, was is there was some questions about what is grooming? How were you groomed? Because there are some people who may be dealing with this and they don't understand the process and what that is. So I'm happy to share and explain what my grooming process looked like because the enemy doesn't just come in full force and just snatch you and throw you in a van. What, I mean, it does happen, but what usually happens is there is a progression that happens. They test your boundaries and they start seeing what they can get away with. They start chipping away at you, um, breaking you down to build you back up. So here is my story. It is going to be a little difficult, um, a little bit of a darker topic. So if you're not for this, feel free to click off, but you can like and subscribe. I do have more positive, uplifting, encouraging videos down below. So, all right. Where to start? So my grooming process began right away. I met this person online and immediately I was showered with love bombing and gifts and this person wanted to travel a very long way to come see me, several hours. And to me, I was like, oh my gosh, this person loves me so much already just seeing the beauty in me I guess I was kind of confused but coming four hours to take me out to dinner just spoke to me as like an act of service so I accepted it and that progressed um, would pay for me to travel there and I would visit and vice versa and immediately the love bombing it was it was kind of overwhelming I had never been loved bomb before like that I thought this person just had a whole lot of love to give and so there were red flags that I ignored and the reason I was ignoring it because I was in a very vulnerable position at this time I was in a low point I had separated and left my ex-husband and at the time I did get a DUI because I was drinking very heavily and, and regularly. I praise the Lord I never hurt anybody doing it and I got caught beforehand. I was living in a house I didn't want to live in uh, because, as a result of my behaviors and some consequences. Um, not being able to live in the house that I once was living in. Everything was a mess. This person came in and offered me safety and security in my pit. And that is oftentimes how they get you, is if you are in a vulnerable position, if you are high risk to be groomed, they, they are happy to oblige. So because all these things were happening, I, I welcomed the gifts and almost immediately he offered to move me in this house. It was a beautiful house. It was several stories. We had an in-ground pool, a nice bar, hot tub. It was in a beautiful part of this country club. So I was game. I, I said, yeah, it beats, it beats what's going on here. And at the time, he started telling me he loved me and it was very soon into the relationship. To me, no one had ever done that before. Again, I thought this was like a blessing and a miracle. Maybe that God sent this man to take care of me, not really understanding being outside of the covenant of marriage, you are not protected at all. 
I moved into the house and I found out very quickly that this was a very toxic person. I couldn't look at my phone or communicate with my family anymore. If I was on my phone, he would take my phone, search it. He put spyware on my phone and any message or a like from anybody he didn't know, which he didn't know any of my friends back home. He would block them without my knowledge. He would also reprimand me. And reprimanding in the beginning started as just the silent treatment. Then other times it would be about 10 to 15 hours of verbal abuse. It would wear me down. It would be so... There would be a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, uh, me apologizing, uh, and gaslighting. And then, so after he would be very upset, he would force me to have sex with him, even though that was not something that I was willing to participate in. And it was, it started like that. And because I was allowing it, I was isolated, I was, I was depressed. I would not say I was in a right state of mind. I was very codependent on this person. He knew that. And because of the isolation that had happened, I didn't have anyone to talk to. These rapes that were going on in the beginning, I didn't understand what that was. And I honestly, so I was in this relationship. I was in this relationship for four years. So the first year looked a lot like that. By month 13, month 14, he started introducing um, rape porn, forcing me to watch it, even though I had said I didn't watch porn. This was not something I wanted to watch. I would tell him no. I would close my eyes. Um, he would hold my eyes open, make me watch it. It was horrid. And there were often times where I did not want to have sex and I would say no and he would guilt me and manipulate me and then he would intimidate me with fighting he would gaslight me so that we would have a fight and he would demand that I would have sex with him in order to resolve the fight otherwise he would not speak to me he was very cruel and so that was a couple months of that um, with the rape porn. Next thing I know, he is inviting his friends over to drink and was getting me more drunk than usual because normally he did not like when I drank. He didn't encourage it. But this first time, he kept blending this margarita mix. I thought it was strange. I had this weird feeling. And then all of a sudden he proposed that we have this threesome with this person. I was like, no. And knowing how jealous he was, because I couldn't walk, I couldn't go to the store by myself, I couldn't be in the gym. I couldn't even be in the separate part of the gym as him because other guys were in the gym. I couldn't walk anywhere. I could not go on a walk by myself. Again, I had spyware on my phone. I didn't have any messages from anybody. So it was very odd to me that this was a request of his. And I fought, actually. He tried to pull off my clothes. We were in the pool, not an, a place that I would ever want to do that in. And so he pulls my pants down and then demands me to, to go, do whatever. And I said, no, please don't. Like, please don't. No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And he said, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Just do it. I said, no. So that progressed. And, you know, by the end of it, I was so defeated. I felt betrayed. 
I just laid there and I was like, what just happened? And I don't think that person was aware. After we later, years later, seven years later, that person contacted me and I had said, you know, I forgive you. This is what was actually going on. So that kind of situation happened seven times. It was always a friend, but there was more to it than that. There, there was a lot um, behind the scenes that I didn't know about until later. So it was those kinds of things. He would invite people to the house and he would, again, he would get me drunk um, and not tell me. I didn't know that this was planned. Sometimes he would ask me and I would say no and he would do it anyway. Then there were times where there was a lot of like hate sex. He would be so angry at me. Well, he would, he would try to start a fight. We would be he would be fighting for long periods of time, sometimes um, eight to 10 hours, maybe longer, and wearing me down emotionally. And then, then he would force himself on me and, and then not speak to me. So it was very subtle. The, I mean, everybody thought we were picture perfect. We were bodybuilding together. We were out at social events. We had the nice hot car and house. And from the outside, it looked okay, but I was destroyed on the inside. I was having suicidal ideations. I was fantasizing uh, of my suicide. I had it planned out. I was gonna go into the bathroom, close the curtain and, and shoot myself. And this is what I had on repeat all the time. I started to get a therapist because I was then having night terrors every single night, which was making my suicidal fantasy stronger. And then the abuse just kept getting worse. It was just blatant and direct, and then it had a lot of neglect. I was having these night terrors so frequently that I was rarely sleeping. I was having anxiety attacks almost every other day. My physical pain in my body manifested to where I couldn't move. My arms, my legs, everything hurt. He was still sexually abusing me during that time. And it caused me so much pain, I just wanted to die. That was actually when I started teaching myself yoga and I got into the new age practice. I didn't know it was new age. I was trying to heal my body. I was trying to create a safe space for myself, but I think that's how the enemy creeps in because the enemy is very subtle and deceitful. So these are some of the tactics because trafficking doesn't always look like some pimp on the side of the street slinging girls and drugs. Sometimes it's your boyfriend and sometimes it's your friend. Sometimes it's a parent. Sometimes it is a boss, a landlord. And I only share my story because I wish someone had told me what was going on because something about my psyche had protected what was actually happening in my mind and it almost killed me. I got to the point of I held the gun to my head he had been fighting with me for several hours and I had just had it. He wasn't in the house, he was fighting with me over the phone, so he didn't see. No one was there to stop me except the Holy Spirit. And I had the gun to my head and I all I could think about was my mother. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, just call her. And I put the gun down and I called my mom and I asked my family to come get me and that day I got my freedom my family was there in just a couple of hours with a u-haul truck ready to go and I'm so thankful that I took that leap this happened 
just weeks before I had a final meeting with my therapist. I told my therapist, I had told her briefly some of the behaviors, but I was very, I was protecting him or myself. I'm not sure what I was doing exactly. But that was when she told me that he was, he was raping me and he was trafficking me. That's why I felt that way. That's why our relationship looked like it did. And that turned my world upside down because now I've been revealed to this truth that was right in front of me the whole time and I had no idea. I felt so stupid. I felt incompetent. I felt out of control um, of my surroundings. She did, she graciously gave me EMDR and that started me on my healing journey. I did spend a couple years doing yoga. I finally got out of the new age practice, but what truly healed me was the love of Jesus. I was delivered by a group of girlfriends after praying so hard. I had been impacted by these things and afflicted by these things for so long. And it began in 2015 and it didn't really stop. I was still impacted by other relationships. I was impacted by how I felt. I was then re-victimized again after after he um, ended up committing suicide and that had destroyed me because by then I had forgiven him he reached out to me a year after we broke up I had not spoke to him I left I didn't speak to him or his family ever and he reached out to me and told me he was struggling with mental health. Told me that he was having a psychic, um, a psychosis, was hearing voices. And I thought by helping him, I could help save other women from being victimized by him. And it would help me. And I'm really glad God gave me the opportunity to forgive him and try to help my friend. Because he was just a very wounded individual who had demons. And he felt very powerless. So he took his control out on me and other women. And it didn't make sense. For, for that to happen because his family was so gracious and good and kind it didn't make sense for someone like that to have hurt someone like me or the other people and then to be re-victimized after helping him for a year through that process for him to wind up committing suicide the same way that I almost committed suicide. It was so painful. That was, that was the pit of my emotion. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel. All these memories started coming back. But then the Lord had graced me with a blessing. He said, write down all of the things that, that you liked about him. What were the traits that you liked about him? What were the qualities that kept you around, that kept you helping him after he did that to you? And then forgive him and release the trauma that he inflicted, the pain and trauma he inflicted on you. Release it. It's not yours anymore. Lay it to rest with him. So, shortly after that, I was graced with a trip to the mountains that was healing. The Lord started bringing me new friendships and people who really were supporting me. Not a lot of people knew that background story. They just knew that a friend of mine had committed suicide. And... 
The Lord continued to bless me and give me favor and shower me with love. I ended up getting rebaptized in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And then right after that, I received a deliverance from all of the demonic oppression that had occurred from these open doors, from all these sexual relationships and new age practices I got involved in. I was, I was delivered from all that pain and that PTSD. I was delivered from anxiety. I was delivered from any sort of depression. It was a mighty move of God. It, it was supernatural because there was no way I could have pulled that one off by myself. And no friend or family of mine could have ever made me feel that good. And I continue to feel that good. I continue to feel that strong. And I continue to feel healed. It wasn't a just a one and done, just a week. And I no, it has been life changing. And he continues to show me how to glorify him with my testimony by surrendering and being obedient by sharing these very hard stories, these very personal, very difficult stories to share. But I believe that these stories can help someone who is in the situation or just got out of the situation because there's a spirit of confusion. When you're in such a toxic environment and you don't know how you got there, you don't know how you're gonna get out or you don't know how you're gonna heal, the Lord is with you. Sometimes we have to go through trials and tribulations so that our testimony can glorify the kingdom by bringing people out of darkness. It's like a crash course in the kingdom of darkness by going through these very painful things, very painful things. Then also he took me through how to take responsibility for it. He allowed me freedom by taking responsibility that I entered into a covenant physically with someone. I lived in sin. I lived with someone outside of my marriage. I welcomed that. I didn't have boundaries. I must have had very low self-esteem to believe some of the things that he said and spoke over my life. And it taught me how to have boundaries. It taught me my worth. It taught me how to protect myself by living a pure life. And it didn't come right away. It took a long time. It took a long time because dealing through sexual trauma, you try to find ways to empower you, like learning Tantra, doing yoga, um, whatever it is that makes you feel powerful, I understand why you do it. You're trying to free yourself from that physical and mental pain. The only thing that's going to free you is the love of the Father and accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repenting from sins and breaking covenant, that is the only way. So I hope my testimony has been a blessing to you. I pray that you find your freedom. And if you need anything, let me know. I'm here to help.